One of the least known remote Alaskan island groups, the Sandman Reefs are comprised of about 100 small islands and islets surrounded by reefs, rocks, and shoals. Located about 30 miles south of Cold Bay near the end of the Alaska Peninsula, these seldom visited islands are relatively pristine and undisturbed and one of the most significant nocturnal seabird nesting areas in Alaska. On June 27, 1978, U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service biologist Edgar Bailey and I, volunteer Nina Faust, were dropped off by helicopter on Cherney Island in the Trinity Islands by the NOAA ship surveyor. Three fuel caches were put out on Outer Iliasic, Medun, and Deer Islands. Our job was a reconnaissance survey of the Sandman Reefs by 16-foot inflatable boat recording the abundance and distribution of marine birds and mammals throughout the island group. With a mean July temperature of 50 degrees Fahrenheit, frequent fog, wind, and rainstorms, these low elevation islands averaging less than 100 feet have no trees. Native-owned Cherney Island had 38 head of cattle in 1978 and once had sheep. July 1, we crossed to 89-acre Goose Island. According to Mike Utak, a well-known Aleut who lived in Cold Bay, a fox farmer lived on Goose Island until he died in 1923. The fox farmer also likely put foxes on Madoon, Hunt, and High Islands. Foxes have died out on the low islands in the Sandman Reefs, in part due to tsunami events like the one in 1946 that took out a lighthouse 86 feet above sea level. We set up camp in a lagoon on Goose Island just before a hard rainstorm hit. Next day, we traversed the island through chest-high vegetation, probing seabird burrows all day. A muddy, wet job, but we found ancient murlet and fork-tailed storm petrels. The island was so riddled with burrows, it was hard not to step on a burrow in the tall grass. July 3, we surveyed small islands and islets in the goose group, including hay, eagle, and little goose. A peregrine falcon on little goose was feasting on gulls. The only Cassin's Ocklet colony in the Sandmans was found on one of the unnamed islets in this part of the Goose Island group. July 4, around 4 p.m., we began a miserable crossing in wind and chop heading for Hunt Island. Strong northwest winds and squalls shrieking out of Cold Bay stirred up rough, choppy seas. On Hunt Island, we found one of the largest ancient murlet colonies of 5,000 plus pairs. We did not tarry long at Hunt Island. With the boat slamming into waves and spray washing over us, we turned and ran with the seas to Medun rather than heading for Deer Island. Fortunately, Madoon has a well-protected little cove where we could safely camp. At night, thousands of leeches and fork-tailed storm petrels and ancient murlets swarmed the sky, crashing off the tent and calling underground. With lush grassy areas and many available rock outcrops, leeches and fork-tailed storm petrels were both abundant. One of two colonies of black-legged kittiwakes was found on Madoon, about 850 pairs. From our base on Madoon, we traveled to very small Patton Island. Here we found all five nocturnal nesting seabirds, including two rhinoceros auklets seen circling the island. Before returning to Madoon, we surveyed Buyan Island with its double-crusted cormorant colony, the only one in the Sandman Reefs. A 10.30 p.m. return trip from Madoon to Patton Island almost ended in disaster. One motor quit on the way and then the anchor line came off the anchor while we were searching for rhinoceros auklets on shore. Only an onshore wind kept us from being stranded with no communications or boat. July 9, after 
two days of rain, we had a weather break allowing us to boat to Outer Iliasic. It was a miserable crossing in survival suits with eight-foot seas and 20 to 30 mile an hour winds. For an hour, Ed navigated by compass until we finally landed on a small hook of land on Outer Iliasic. In 1978, red foxes were still on Outer Iliasic. July 10, weather improved enough to survey Serana Island, a short boat ride south of camp, where we found few seabirds, probably due to its proximity to Outer Iliasic. Foxes can swim from Outer Iliasic to Serana. We counted 450 sea otters at Serana Island. The same day, we continued eight miles south from camp to Susilnoi Island. We noted a fair sandy beach and running water on the island. Sushilnoi had ancient murlets, both fork-tailed and leeches petrels, and an estimated 7,000 pairs of tufted puffins. The next day we launched over kelp-covered rock at low tide against an onshore wind to survey Rona Island. We only found small nocturnal seabird populations. Leaving Outer Iliasic for Deer Island, tides, wind, and seas, and then fierce williwas off Deer Island held us back. After two hours, we were barely gaining ground and getting wet. We both donned survival suits, allowing us to take more spray and go fast enough to gain against the strong winds. We finally landed on Deer Island to set up a wet tent in a downpour. July 12, we loaded all our gear and headed for 52-acre High Island with northwest winds churning up the seas. About 9,000 pairs of horned puffins rafted around High Island. We landed in a small lee cove, anchored the boat, and climbed High Island. Ed estimated the island had 50,000 plus pairs of leeches storm petrels. High Island had the most seabirds in all of the Sandman reefs. Back at the beach, we found our boat swamped and sideways to the waves. All our gear and spare motor were underwater. We managed to get off the beach, bail the boat, and return to a sandy beach on Deer Island next to a freshwater stream. One of the only sunny days in our whole month's trip allowed us to spread all our gear out to dry and flush the salt water from the spare motor and get it running again. Without the spare, the trip would have ended. Finally, another sunny day for surveying Fawn and Sozavarica Islands. Fawn Island did not have very many birds. Sozavarica Island had four nocturnal species, including more than 10,000 pairs of leeches storm petrels. July 14, we surveyed Let Island, which only had a small number of a wide variety of seabirds. The evening of July 15, we broke camp on Deer Island and motored to 222-acre Amagat Island. Technically not one of the Sandman Reefs, but a very important seabird island. Thousands of glaucous winged gulls nest all over the island. 50,000 pairs of tufted puffins. 70,000 pairs of horned puffins. Over 80% of all horned puffins on the survey. Pigeon guillemots. 20 black oyster catchers. Red-faced and pelagic cormorants. Three out of five of the nocturnal nesting seabirds, ancient murlets, fork-tailed storm petrels, and leeches storm petrels also had colonies here. Brown bears swim the two miles to thousand foot high Amagat Island and dig up puffins. 
The excessive rain in July 1978 took a terrible toll on Amagat's burrow nesting seabirds. Many dense burrow and nesting areas were completely denuded of grass or were flooded. We surveyed Egg Island one day and then the next day on July 18 we surveyed nearby Unga Island. This island turned out to be the densest Cassin's Auklet colony we visited on this survey with over 50,000 pairs. A trail leads up to the top where there's a signal light. Again, high mortality where huge swaths of mud slopes densely packed with burrows had slid down to the ocean. We spent the afternoon probing burrows and then returned to our camp at Amagat Island. Finally, on July 21st, on one of the few nice days in our month-long journey, we headed back to Cold Bay for a flight back to Homer. The remote Sandman Reefs are truly one of the remotest, richest seabird nesting areas now included in the Alaska Maritime National Wildlife Refuge, based in Homer, Alaska.